Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. As we take a look at this first example, we've got the equation 3x squared plus 10x equals 8. When we're using the quadratic formula, we always need to make sure that our equation is equal to 0 before we start picking out our a, b, and c values. So we're going to need to take that 8 that's on the right-hand side and move it over to the left-hand side. Since it's a positive 8, well, to move a positive 8 over, we're going to have to subtract 8 on both sides. So we'll get 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 equals 0. Now that we've got it equal to 0, now we're going to go ahead and identify our a, b, and c values. So our a is the number in front of the x squared, so that's 3. Our b is the number in front of the plane x, so that's 10. And our c is the number on the end without any variable attached to it, so that's the negative 8. Now that I know what my values are, I need to take them and plug them into that quadratic formula where they belong. So it goes x equals the opposite of the b value, so the b value is 10, so the opposite of that is negative 10, plus or minus the square root of, first we need to do b squared, so I'm going to take 10 and square it, and then minus 4 times that a value, which is 3, times the c value, which is negative 8. And that's all over 2 times the a value of 3. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify some things down, starting underneath the radical. So we've got x equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root of, well, 10 squared is 100. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And then if I multiply that by negative 8, I get positive 96, so plus 96 on the end there. And then on bottom, 2 times 3 is just 6. Now underneath that radical, we do have a little bit of addition happening, so I'm going to take care of that next. So negative 10 plus or minus the square root of, well, 100 plus 96 is 196, and that's all over 6. Now 196 is actually a nice perfect square. So we get x equals negative 10 plus or minus. Now if we square root 196, we get 14, and that's over 6. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is split these fractions up. Because of the plus and the minus in there, we're going to end up getting two separate answers. So first I want to break this up into negative 10 plus the 14, and then divide that by 6. And then for my second answer, I'm going to have to take the negative 10 minus the 14, and then divide that by 6. So first, if I do the negative 10 plus 14, well, that gives me 4. I can't really do 4 divided by 6, but I can reduce that fraction down. 4 and 6 are both divisible by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So one of my answers is 2 thirds. For my other answer, if I take negative 10 and subtract 14, I get negative 24 on top, and then negative 24 divided by 6 is negative 4. So my two answers are 2 thirds and negative 4. Taking a look at this example, we've got the equation negative 5x plus 2x squared plus 1 equals negative 2x. Couple things I notice about this one. First thing I notice is that this equation is not equal to 0. So I'm going to work on rearranging that. So to get rid of the minus 2x on the right-hand side, I'm going to add 2x on both sides. So then I'll get negative 3x plus 2x squared plus 1 equals 0. Now the next thing I notice is that this equation is not written in power descending order, going from the highest power to the lowest power. So I'm going to rearrange it just a little bit. The x squared is the biggest power, so I'm going to take that 2x squared and move it to the front of my equation. Then the next biggest x that I see is this negative 3x, so I'm going to put minus 3x. And then I've got this plus 1, and that's equal to 0. So now we've got this equation written the way that we want it to be. So now let's go through and identify our a, b, and c values. So a is the number in front of the x squared, so that's 2 b is the number in front of the plane x, so that's negative 3, and c is the number on the end with no variable attached to it at all, so that's 1. So now I'm going to take those values and plug them in where they need to go in my quadratic formula. 
So I get x equals, first thing I'm supposed to do is the opposite of b. b is negative 3, so the opposite of that is positive 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 3 squared, minus 4, times the a value of 2, times the c value of 1, and all of that is over 2 times the a value of 2. I'm going to work on simplifying things down underneath my radical first. So I get x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of, well, negative 3 squared is positive 9. And then if I take negative 4 times 2, that's negative 8, times 1 is still negative 8, so minus 8. And then on bottom, 2 times 2 is 4. Underneath that radical, we have some subtraction to do. So we get x equals 3 plus or minus the square root. Now if I take 9 minus 8, that's 1, and this is all being divided by 4. Now I'm going to simplify down that square root next. So we get x equals 3 plus or minus, the square root of 1 is just 1, and this is still being divided by 4. Now I'm going to work on getting my two separate answers in here. So to get the first answer, I'm going to split this fraction up into 3 plus 1 over 4. And then for my second part of the answer, I need to take the 3 and subtract 1 and then divide that by 4. Well, if I take 3 plus 1, that is 4, and 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I get x equals 1 as my first answer. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 divided by 4, we can't really take 2 and divide it by 4, but we can reduce that fraction down. 2 and 4 are each divisible by 2, so I get 1 half as that answer. So my two answers are 1 and then 1 half. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.